It was a very hot day in the Algarve when I began recording this, and if you watched the previous video on when I installed my RNEG2 slash RT6 radio, you would have seen me put the USB input into this small cubby hole on the left hand side of the driver. Of course, this being a left hand drive car, otherwise it would be on the right hand side of the driver, but I digress completely. I decided that this wouldn't do because the input was just dangling and it really made the cubby more or less unusable. My idea was to transfer it to the glove box. Now you can see there's a wire already dangling there and that's because I took out the aux input module. Here it is. Thing is, even if I did put the USB socket there, how would I keep it in place? Well, I resorted to 3D printing, which I used before when I made a cup holder for my previous car. And on a side note, that cup holder has been very successful and it sold a lot online. But anyway, back to this. I created some test pieces to see if all the fittings were in order, to see if that socket fit properly, and also more or less a replica of the fittings of the original housing, and it all went very well. I should point out that first I created a virtual model. In a light bulb moment, I thought, hang on a sec, what if I create some extra openings so I can actually store USB drives? And so that's what I did. And I also created these little springs. That's what helps keep them in place and put them and remove them without much difficulty. So yeah, that is looking, looking pretty good. And actually, I can't wait to get to the car and put this in place. One of the reasons why it's facing this way is because if you imagine it in the car, uh, it has to face um, sort of like downwards because otherwise the whole thing would come out way too far into the glove box. So I want to reduce the actual, how should I put this, the uh, intrusion. And if you look at the original and put it actually side by side, you can see that it doesn't really intrude that much more than the original um, auxiliary input box. So for this final part we're in the car, I've got my removal tools. And if you remember at the very beginning of the video, the cable for the USB is in this cubby here on my left. And if you haven't watched the video, there's a video where I install this radio and you can see me threading with great difficulty the USB cable from the back of the radio all the way to this side. But now to remove the uh, USB cable, or should I say to relocate it to the glove box, which is where I want it to go, I have to remove the radio, hence the removal tools. There you go. Out it comes. Oh, hang on a sec. I brought a towel to cover the gear stick gear knob but anyway many immature people laugh at the word knob so the radio nor the neither the radio nor the um the gear stick are damaged in any way so here is here's the cable i want to pull pull it out here there you go remove that I'm going to remove the kick panel and unless you've already threaded also a cable through there this is not going to be of interest to you so that's why I'm going to stop. It's out! Now I just have to thread it over to that side and I don't remember what I did last time I did it because on my old car I threaded a um, a three millimeter three and a half millimeter jack cable it was a male, male, it was about, I threaded a wire through there, a cable. Now I removed the uh, cable from the back of the radio and I'm going to try to thread it in through there because that cable, that's an auxiliary cable, so it must somehow come to the radio. So I'm going to try to thread this along the same path. Anyway, I changed my mind and I thought I'm going to go in through the fascia and if you don't know how to remove the fascia, you see my radio uh, video. <sighs> anyway, sometime later... And yeah, I've threaded it in the um, cable there that way, and it's going out where the screen cable is also going out. So there might be an, I think there's an orifice, if memory serves me correctly, there's an orifice that lead down to the chamber where the radio is. 
uh, did the obvious thing, which was to unscrew the screen and thread it through the orifice that's there. And I can't focus. Focus, please. It might, oh, there we go. So that's where the other cables go through. Should be easier. Job's done. There's the end of the other cable. And there are the other two cables. So there, that's plugged in and can go back. And I'm going to button everything up. Now, I don't think it's hard enough uh, for you to need instructions on how to do it. It's pretty easy. Um, yeah, I'll join you in a moment to put in the new housing there. So the first one through. This is my housing. So snap that in. This is what I used before to keep pen drives and put it here. There you go. Not too shabby. I'm knackered. I'm sweating all over the place. Uh, oh, hang on a sec. Let's see if it works. Ugh. Yep, that's it. Whoops, let me, let me shut it up before I get a copyright strike. But that works, so I'm happy with that. Before I end the video, I should point out that even though the USB was working, the AUX was not. Why is that? That green plug that was dangling from the ceiling of the glove box, that was like a five pin or six pin plug. Whereas in the back of that black socket, it was like three pins. So something was off. I have no idea what. I'll have to investigate and see if I can actually remedy this. So, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'm going to be posting a lot more content of stuff that I correct in the car shortly. And I bid you all farewell. See you next time.